This is a short video about subsequences and divergence. So let's say you've got a sequence Xn, which I've drawn for you a picture in red. The idea of a subsequence is, what if I don't necessarily use just all the points in my sequence? What if I just pick some? And uh, so what if I make another infinite list just out of the points I already have? So I've tried to highlight some of those, say in blue. And remember, I'm gonna pick infinitely many of these, but the point is, what if I just made a new list out of what I'm already given? Then you've got what's called a subsequence. So what's a way to say that a little bit more formally? So for each natural number k, we're gonna let the number nk uh, be such that n1 is less than n2, blah, blah, blah. So what we're doing is we're just kind of relabeling some of our indices here. So to make this less confusing in my picture above, this first one I've highlighted is what I'm calling n1, the first term in my subsequence. The next one I've highlighted is what I'm calling n2. Uh, and so the point is, is that my index is growing. So I'm going farther and farther to the right. And then maybe I called this one down here n3. So all we're saying is, this is maybe a more formal way to say that we're just gonna pick some of the points that I already have. So uh, hopefully that's more clear. The point then is, if I take all the terms in my sequence, whose index is one of these nk's, and there's a lot of circles going on there, just whose index is one of these nk's now, then that's a subsequence of xn. So let's look at a couple examples. Well, just let's do one example. So let's say xn is a sequence that says uh, minus one to the nth power for each natural number n. So uh, one subsequence you could make is, what if I just said nk is 2k? So in other words, what if I just always made this exponent even? That's what this is trying to say. Then that's a subsequence that's just always one. But just so you see kind of the math that's going on, right? x n k, well here's nk, it's 2k. So I should plug in 2k for that, but then minus one to an even power is just always, always one. So this is the constant sequence that's just one every time. Uh, similarly, what if I let nk now be of the form 2k minus 1 for all natural numbers k? And so now I'm just telling you that I'm just picking off the odd exponents from this sequence here. So I'm making the subsequence whose exponents are just odd. And in that case, what would you get then? You'd get minus 1 to the 2k minus 1 power for this subsequence here, which is just the constant subsequence minus 1 minus 1 minus 1. So these that I've highlighted are two subsequences of this sequence xn. Um, so one result is if xn converges, so if the big, the whole sequence converges to L, and L's a real number, well then any subsequence of xn also has to converge to L. And I'll try to uh, draw you a picture, I think, first of why that should be believable. So if my sequence xn converges, maybe it looks something like this. As I go farther to the right, the point should cluster around L. How do you make any subsequence? Well, you're just picking a few of these, or not a few. I mean, you're picking maybe not all the points at a time. And so the point is, any subsequence that I make, well, the farther you go to the right, my highlighted ones also have to start to cluster around L. That's what this is trying to say. So how do you kind of prove that? a little bit more formally. Well, I guess the proof is formal, right? So let's let x and k be any subsequence of xn. So if I want to show that uh, you know x and k also converges to L, well, I'm going to do that with my epsilon definition. So let's let epsilon be positive. And what else do I know? Well, I get to assume that xn converges to L. So there exists some natural number capital K such that for all uh, indices n larger than or equal to that capital A, I know that the terms in my sequence are within epsilon of L. All right, so one idea here, and kind of the logic again, is, well, I mean, these are just terms of that same sequence. This should also work if you put x and k there. Yeah, you're right. Just how do we say that a little bit more formally? You just need to know, well, this index nk, the indices of my subsequence, those are always at least little k. So in other words, n sub little k is always uh, at least little k for every single natural number k. Um, and so maybe to think about that, you might try to prove that by induction, say. But I'll skip that for you. So then my point then is what if I just make sure that this little k is bigger than this capital K that I know ensures that all the terms in my sequence are within epsilon of L. And that is exactly the next line. So why don't I make sure that I'm far enough in my subsequence so that all the terms in my subsequence uh, have an index that's past that magical capital K. Again, to ensure that all the terms in my subsequence also are within epsilon of L. So the next thing I want to tell you about is what's the formal way to say that a sequence diverges? So how do I say that a sequence does not converge to a given number x? 
So you might see this in some books. TFA is short for the following are equivalent. So what I'm gonna say, each of the things that I'm about to say are like characterizations of each other. They're all if and only ifs of each other. So one, Xn does not converge to this number L if and only if there exists a particular epsilon, so epsilon naught to specify that, such that for every natural number k, there exists some index nk, such that nk is bigger than k, which isn't too hard to believe. But then in particular though, xnk is uh, outside of that epsilon naught window of L. So xnk is not within epsilon naught or epsilon zero of this number L. And this is all true, if and only if, or each of these are equivalent to, again, is what this says. So one, two, and three are equivalent to each other, and so they're all equivalent to this third one down here, which is another way to say number two, really. There exists a particular number, epsilon naught, and you can find a subsequence uh, such that that subsequence is never within epsilon naught of L. So again, that's what this says here. Subsequence is never, ever within epsilon naught of L. And so uh, let me give you an example of, or maybe a picture of, maybe just, maybe two. So these are all the same thing, but just how do you visualize what's going on? So what we're saying is, if you had an L and you know that the red dots, or if the red dots don't converge to L, that means that the red dots eventually don't cluster to L. So what we're saying is, is that no matter how far to the right you go, you should always be able to find a spot where that point in your sequence pops out of that window. So we're saying no matter how far right you are, you're guaranteed to be able to find somebody, like this bad point here, that pops out of this epsilon naught window of L. So since you could always do that, again, my points do not get close to L. So I won't prove each of these. How you would prove these though, in case you needed to, you'd probably do something like one implies two, you'd prove that, then you'd plot and prove two implies three, and then the last thing you'd do is prove three implies one. And then that would show that all three of these are equivalent. So in case you have to do that for maybe a different class or maybe later in this class, but I'll skip that here. I guess I gotta erase those now. Okay, I've got more. Oh, so then how would you use this um, definition really of divergence to maybe show something like, okay, the limit of one over n is not equal to one. How do I justify that? So here's a picture down here where I've drawn for you uh, what the sequence maybe looks like if I'm plotting these again, um, where the y coordinates are really my sequence here. And so uh, what would I need to do? Well, I'd need to pick a particular epsilon naught. So let's say epsilon naught's a half. So I'm gonna make a window one half above and below uh, my, my bad, or my, uh, my point one here. And so well, that would be this window from three halves to one half in blue there. And so what I'm saying is, um, can I find some indices so that the red points are either always outside of that blue window or they pop out of that blue window kind of infinitely often. So what if I just took like multiples of uh, four to be my indices? So then these are numbers like uh, the sequence, right, the y coordinates are 1 fourth, 1 eighth, the next one would be 1 twelfth. And so you see that all of these, that subsequence, is never ever within that window of 1, so therefore the big sequence cannot converge by the above. So maybe how would you say that a little bit more formally? So my sequence is xn is 1 over n, and what I said is to let epsilon not just be a half, so one half was convenient to play with. And what we'll do is we'll choose nk to be four times k. And again, I just picked that. You could make the same argument if you chose 2k or 3k. It doesn't really matter. So my point then, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure what's the difference the difference, yeah, between x and k and one. Well, x and k is the same thing as one over four k minus one. And if you think about, you know, when k is equal to one, that is when this difference is smallest, right? You're taking a fourth away from one. But like the next term, you're only taking one eighth away from one. So that this difference is always at least what happens when you take one fourth away from one, which is bigger than a half. So my point, what you just show, you just showed that the terms in your sequence never get within one half of one, is what these inequalities say together right there in a picture. So what's uh, another way, so maybe a consequence of those uh, if and only ifs above, that the following are equivalent above, is what's called maybe the divergence criteria. So if you've got a sequence that has two convergent subsequences whose limits don't match, then the sequence diverges. And another thing you might look for is if you've got an unbounded sequence, then it's got to diverge also. 
So those are two things you might look for if you're trying to determine whether a sequence converges or diverges. So if I look back just to demonstrate maybe number one here, look at this sequence that consists of minus one raised to the nth power. If this thing diverges, how come? So what I'm gonna do is show you number one, can I exhibit two subsequences who have different limits? And so sure, what if I took all the even powers? So x sub 2k, which would be minus one to the 2k, which is just the constant sequence one, and what if I took another subsequence that consisted of all, again, the odd powers, or in other words, the odd indices. And so that would be minus one to the 2k minus one, which again is the constant sequence negative one. So the point, well, the limit of the even terms is one, but the limit of the odd terms is negative one. So what happened, we just found two subsequences whose limits don't equal. So therefore, the parent sequence, the big thing, cannot converge, it diverges. And that is the end of that part.